Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and today I'm coming to you with one of my most requested videos of the past year, and one that I've been putting off for a couple of reasons. This video is going to be a complete breakdown and part list of my Mark 18 Mod 1 Block 2 Clone Rifle build, as you see in front of you right here. I've been wanting to make this video to help out other people wanting to build similar rifles. I know that I put a lot of time and effort into finding the right parts, sourcing the right parts, and actually finding a proper list of everything that goes on one of the Navy Mark 18 Mod 1 builds. And the reason I have been putting this off is because on many of my other Mark 18 builds, often people want to be what I refer to as clone clowns. So if you're one of these clone clowns, don't even bother watching the video and don't even bother commenting on the video because I'm not even going to put up with your comments. What a clone clown is, for those of you who might not know, is somebody that likes to go around, nitpick these clones to death, and then tell me how stupid I am, how much I wasted my money, or how incorrect the gun is. Because for some reason, they seem to think that they have way more knowledge than me and they just want to make me feel bad and be mean to me. I get that all the time. I know it's so silly, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, if you plan on being mean to me, don't even comment. I'm just going to delete you from the channel and that's it. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I normally get two types of clone clowns. The first clone clowns are the ones that nitpick my rifle apart. Say, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. Then I'm able to show them pictures of actual guys in the Navy using this equipment with this exact same setup and they go, Oh, well, but, but, but. and then I go and look at their channel, if they even have one, and they have a Mark 18 inspired build that uses like an Anderson manufacturing lower with a Palmetto State 10 and a half inch upper, and they think they have a Mark 18. They don't even go through half the effort that I did to find the correct parts. It's so funny, they nitpick my gun apart, I look at theirs, it's not even a Mark 18. Number two, the second kind of person that comments tells me, if you really want a real Mark 18, go join the Navy. I'm like, well, number one, I'm 41 years old and have an autoimmune disease called rheumatoid arthritis. I couldn't join even if I wanted to, which I don't want to join because that's not the career path that I took. And I probably wouldn't have made it into special forces. Not the strongest, not the fastest, and I got a dad bod, which I'm pretty, which I'm pretty proud of. So anyway, I couldn't get issued a Mark 18. And as a civilian, I can't get a fully automatic lower. So if you're going to come on here and tell me how stupid I am, this isn't a real Mark 18, it's not full auto, well, I'm a civilian. I can only build semi-auto. And that's it. So with that said, and I had to preference the video, and this is the whole reason I have been putting this video off for so long to help out all the people that have been asking me, and you want to know what the real parts of this build are, and where I source them, and if they're clone correct or not, Stay tuned, I'm gonna get this on the bench. We're gonna break down the upper, the lower, the suppressor, and all the accessories. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we're gonna start with the lower receiver. And before I go over every single part in this, I need to remind you of a couple things when it comes to a Mark 18 build. There's a couple of ways that you can go at this. Number one, you can go after just the specs, meaning you wanna get the right barrel length, generally like a mil spec lower, some parts that look right, and you generally have a Mark 18. Then you can go the route that I did, which is to try to find as many of the authentic parts that could have been found on a Mark 18 as possible and use that to build. That's more time consuming and obviously uh, more expensive. And the other thing too you have to realize when it comes to a Mark 18 build is that not all of the parts that you will find in pictures or online or even parts lists are necessarily what was used during the entire run of the Mark 18. So it's not really a specific list of parts, but a set of parts. So for example, there could be variations in what the grip or the color of the stock or a number of different things. So just because I chose to go a particular way with my build does not mean that it is not clone correct or that using another part, and I'll try to go over what those parts are, doesn't mean that your clone is incorrect. As I said, over time they changed parts and sometimes they would build them with particular grips or different stocks and they were still Mark 18s. Okay, so I'm just going to go over my particular build. The first thing we're going to go over here is I got a Colt Defense. Obviously this is semi-automatic only because it does not have the third pin, but this is a government property, U.S. property, M4A1 carbine marked lower. 
The Mod 1s used a M4A1 lower and the Mod 0s used an M16A1 lower. So this is about as close as I can get as a civilian to what would be on a real 18 uh, mod 1 or Mark 18 Mod 1. I did have some engraving put on here in Navy 18-1 and I'm going to roll in some pictures while I'm talking about this of actual Mark 18s and you can see that this engraving is in the same font and is in the same size. I had this done by Ident Marking Services. The only thing that I left off is in the originals they would cross out M4 carbine. Uh, they might just do that as a surface mark or uh, maybe an etching, but because this is a rifle that I don't want to, number one, break any laws with, so I do not want to deface either the serial number or the uh, marking of the model, so I can't really do that. The engraving here is also etched into the receiver. Some people say that they were surface marked like the Mod Zeros, and some people say they were etched in and laser marked in a little with a little bit of depth. The pictures that I have that I've kind of rolled in now show depth to this. So that's what I had ident marking do. Okay, all of the parts, the lower parts, like for example, the takedown pins, the magazine catch, the bolt catch, they are all Colt parts kits. Like everything that you would get on a normal Colt AR-15 rifle, that's what all the parts are, the detents, the springs, so forth. There's nothing special about that at all. When it comes to the grip, I went with a Knight's Armament A2 in Taup. Now, a lot of the Mod 1s, I'm sorry, the Mod 0s came with an A1 grip. Uh, the Mod 1s came with an A2 grip. They also came with Magpul grips, but many times the end user could change them out to a grip that they preferred. So I have seen pictures of Mark 18s with Ergo grips on them as well. So this is one of those parts that just because I went with a Knight's Armament A2 in Taup does not mean that this is clone incorrect. Because as an end user, I could put on anything that I want and I thought this color matched the color of the build. And this is something that any end user in the Navy could have put on. But this was not a specific part. So you can put on an A2 and be correct. You can put on a Magpul and also be correct. They were all used uh, in some capacity. Uh, let's stick with the front of the receiver here as well. So uh, we'll go to the trigger group. This is going to be a Geisley Super Semi-Automatic Trigger. So it's a two-stage trigger. The Actual Mark 18s use this trigger, but in a full auto configuration. So obviously I cannot have a full auto trigger, and this is not a full auto lower. But this is the closest to the Geisley, I guess we'll call it the super full automatic trigger that they use. Um, so this is just the civilian version of that. And there are some of the early Mark 18s that use just a standard M16 A1 parts kit as well. So both those would be correct. So you just have a mil spec parts kit, that would be clone correct, and also the Geisley. I decided to go with the Geisley one, and it also has the Geisley pins as well. The safety selector here is Ambi, and this is a Colt part marked with their cage code. Uh, I do have a UID tag over here. This is made by Carolina Laser Works. And the originals would have had a dot matrix uh, code on them. Uh, I'm not sure what type of UID this is, but it does definitely does look the part and this is gonna be the absolute closest that you can get to what the US military uses. The buffer tube on this is a Colt Four position. Now, many AR-15s today use a six position buffer tube. Colts have always used a four position buffer tube. Many of the Mark 18s used Colt rifles, so they had four position buffer tubes. I did source this. Um, so you can put on a six position. There's nothing wrong with that. That would not be clone correct, but nobody would know. But this is a four position. I am using a CQD rear sling attachment point. This is something that was found on both the Mod Zeros and the Mod 1s. The stock that I have is a B5 Industries soap mod stock. Now, this is one of those points of contention with a lot of people. They'll say, well, if you don't have an original crane made stock, it's not clone correct. Well, actually, those are only used for a very short period of time. They're unobtainium because they are almost impossible to get in aftermarket because they were only used in the military. And uh, they're very expensive if, if you can find them. Now, there were two companies that were licensed by the government to make them. One is B5 Industries, 
and the other one was LMT. Now, a lot of people say the LMT ones are the real ones. Well, actually, B5 Industries is a government contractor, and this particular stock is in Coyote Tan, and, other, and also people will say it has to be in black or flat dark earth. Well, this is actually a government stock. This is not the civilian version. This is a government overrun. This was not marked as a B5 Industries, but it does have their cage code in here. It has all of the part numbers that they would use. And so this came right off of a government contract overrun. So this is as close as I'm going to get in a color that's going to match this particular rifle. So I'm very happy with this. This is a soap mod correct uh, stock and is a cage code and NSN numbered soap mod stock from B5 Industries. So that, as I said, about the closest that I'm going to be able to get. And this is one of the features that if you have a Mark 18, you have to have a soap mod stock, whether it be an original crane, if you can get it, an LMT in either black or flat dark earth, or a B5 system. I'm sorry, I said B5 industries, I meant B5 systems, um, either in black, flat dark earth, or coyote tan. And I believe that is the complete parts of the lower receiver. So let's move on to the upper receiver now. So something I just neglected to mention when I was talking about the lower receiver is that I'm using a standard buffer spring and I'm using a Colt H2 buffer. That's something that you do have to use. Uh, I've heard that they've used H1s, but the H2s were more common on the Mark 18s. So that was the last part that I neglected to mention when I was talking about the lower. All right, so now let's really get on to the upper. All right, so let's talk about the upper receiver. The upper receiver is going to be a Colt cage code marked, so it has 13629 uh, marked upper receiver. The small parts on the upper are just gonna be a stock Colt upper parts kit. So you have a Colt forward assist and all the parts and pins for that. You also have a Colt dust cover. There's nothing special about that in the spring and the hinge pin for that as well. The barrel is going to be a Colt 10.3 inch barrel. The originals in the Mod Zeros were cut down M4s, but later Colt actually produced 10.3 inch barrels to the military specifications. That is what this one is. This is a factory Colt 10.3 inch Mark 18 barrel. I am running a Knight's Armament NT4 QD flash hider on this. And some people will say, well, they used the, the Surefire SOCOMs. You're wrong. Well, actually, they used both. Both the NT4 suppressor and the Surefire SOCOM were in service on both the Mod Zeros and the Mod 1s. So when it comes to the rail, of course, you have to have a Mark 18 uh, Daniel Defense Rail in flat dark earth. That is just something that you have to have. That was one of the things that made the Mark 18 build. So that's what I have here. I do have some Knight's Armaments uh, backup front sights. These are the one in Taup in the front. And in the rear, you have the 400M, which is adjustable. Uh, they also used the 300M, I believe, as well. Those were not as adjustable. Uh, they had two apertures that this one is adjustable for both windage and elevation. Uh, I'm running a Tango Down vertical foregrip. This is the correct one with an NSN number uh, that the U.S. military uses. They did offer uh, also Knight's Armament vertical foregrips if you want to go with that direction, but this one matched the color. And these were found more on the Mod 1s than on the Mod Zeros. Let's talk about the bolt carrier next. So the next thing is going to be, as I mentioned, a Colt mark. So it's going to have a C here on the side of the bolt carrier. So this is a Colt bolt carrier. All of the other parts are Colt. So the cam pin, the firing pin, uh, and the bolt are all Colt. And when it comes to the bolt, you do have to do the what's called the BCM extractor upgrade. So sometimes Colt rifles will just have an extractor spring. This has a a uh, rubber o-ring that goes over that spring to help aid in extraction on the shorter barrels. And so that was something else that the Mark 18 program had. So you have to have that as well, but everything else here on the bolt carrier group, full auto profile, Colt. The charging handle 
that they use is made by PRI. This is the Gas Buster charging handle. They offered them both in black and this is a desert tan and they use the military latch. They offer this Gas Buster charging handle with three different latches and the US military uses what's referred to as the military latch. So that's what this one is and of course I got it in the tan color to match the theme of the rifle. The magazine that I use with the gun, this is a government contract GI mag. Uh, I forget who made it, but the cage code is 6P199 with the blue follower. Uh, also, they think the color matches the theme of the rifle very, very, very well. The suppressor that I'm running is the Knight's Armament NT4 in Taup. They also had them in black. Uh, so these were found more on the Mod 1s, I'm sorry, the Mod 0s, but they were also found on the Mod 1s. As I said, this is one of those things where they could uh, kind of pick and choose. So sometimes you see them with Knight's Armament cans, and sometimes you'll see them with Surefire cans. Just because the Surefires are more available, people think those are the ones that are clone correct. These are actually clone correct as well. I can show you many pictures uh, proving that is the case. So this is actually a pretty hard to get and pretty expensive suppressor as well. <clears throat> so now let's talk about the accessories. Okay, so now let's talk about the accessories. So here in the back, I'm running a EOTech G33 magnifier. And I know some people will say, that's not clone correct. The original ones used the, the tan anodized. Well, they haven't made the tan anodized in a very long time. And on the civilian market, they're unobtainium. And if you can even find one, you're paying $2,000. So this is the closest one that I can get here on the civilian market for a reasonable price. It is essentially the same magnification. Everything is the same. It just has this cover on it, but it is the correct color. I'm running an EOTech EXP uh, dash, I think it's the EXP 3-0, I think is what it is. It's the one with the quick detach lever on it and it is in the flat dark earth. The original ones would have had some markings down here. Um, that's another thing that I cannot get in aftermarket. They will not release those. I could try to copy it and have uh, this laser etched, but the ones in the military did not have the EOTech marking up here. So there's nothing I can do. This is just the best that I can do. So if you're gonna be a clone clown and tell me that that is incorrect, number one, I know, but that is the very best that I can do. Then on the top here, I have an Insight Technologies, which is also owned by EOTech. Uh, this is the civilian version of the PEC-15, which has a infrared illuminator, infrared laser, and a visible laser. And it does not have the high settings. It cannot by law. So they won't sell them with the high settings. As you can see, there's even a block here on them. But even if you could get it past the notch past that point, it doesn't have the electronics inside that would allow for the higher settings. Uh, so this is the civilian version of that illumination and laser aiming system. And I'm running a Surefire Scout light. Now, this is another point of contention. I know the originals would have run an Insight Technologies WMX light. I know that. But if you look at many of the pictures and of the later Mo uh, Mark 18 Mods 1s, they had Surefire Scout lights. Many of them would have the longer Scout lights, but some of them had the shorter ones. This is what this one is. This is the 300C. So I think the 300C, which is more compact, looks better on a shorter gun. But if you wanted the higher illumination you can get the longer one that has a longer uh, battery um, casing for it so it has more uh, power they are all correct just because the originals used insight technology doesn't mean that that a surefire is incorrect they did use surefire scout lights of various models so any surefire scout light is clone correct i have pictures to prove it and I will uh, roll all the pictures I in, or all the pictures I have in at the end of this video, so you guys can check them out for yourself. So when it comes to deciding how you activate each, uh, whether it be the laser aiming device or the Surefire Scout light, I have a tactical night vision uh, taps system here. Now this is not necessarily clone correct, but there was never an official. A button system for the Mark 18. Some of them you would use your hand at the top. Some of them would have just the button here on the side on the back of the scout light. This is just a really cool device that is produced by Tactical Night Vision. Uh, and so this offers both a connection point for the Surefire Scout Light and for the 
Tech 15. So I have all of my wires run in a very organized way. I am using the Ergo Grips rails and the rail ladders that also have the points or the attachments so you can run wires through them as well for your cable management. I am also running a CQD forward sling mount. This is clone correct. If you're going to have a Mark 18, you got to have this sling mount as well as the one in the back that I mentioned. When it comes to the engraving, now this is also something that if you really want to be clone correct, you got to have. All of the uppers in the Mark 18 program were serialized. They were not serialized the same as the lowers. They had a separate serial number. So the numbers always began with one zero if it was a 10.3 inch barrel and 14 if it was a 14 inch barrel, followed by two zeros and then a unique four digit number. So this number is not the serial number of the gun. This is just a number that I made myself. This one is etched in. Some of the pictures I've seen show etchings. Some of them show surface marks. So I went, I went ahead and got an etching so it has a little bit of depth to it. This little tag here was also made by Carolina Laser Works. And it is the closest that he could come up with based off of the pictures that I could find of the UID tag that goes on the upper receivers. So I think he did a really, really cool job on that. It's really hard to attach because they attach them on the side of the receiver where it's curved. So when you get these, they're flat and you kind of have to bend that tag uh, to make it fit and to stick. But I got that one to work pretty well. So I think that is about everything I have on this build. And I think I went over every part. So if there's anything you think I left off, let me know and I'll get you the information. I'm also gonna put a complete parts list in the description below so you guys can build this rifle exactly as I did if that's what you want. And um, if you, you kinda wanna use it as a starting point and maybe go in a different direction, you can do that as well. So there you go. So that is a complete parts list for my Mark 18 Mod 1 Block 2 build. So there it is, with all the different parts, magazines, the correct suppressor, and the theme of the rifle. So there you go. So let me know if you have any questions. I know this was kind of a real detail-oriented video. It might not be super exciting for a lot of people, uh, but for some people it may, and I hope it helps someone out. All right, so let me know if you have any questions, and as always, Thanks for watching.